Good evening, and welcome to New York Metro Weather Severe Weather Briefing Number One for Hurricane Sandy, which was actually just declared a hurricane uh, by the National Hurricane Center at five o'clock p.m. on Wednesday, October twenty-fourth. Uh, so, what we're looking at here, this image that you see on the top of our uh, cover screen here, is uh, the European model's forecast for Hurricane Sandy. And in this presentation, uh, we're going to go over some of the facts about Hurricane Sandy. Um, the meteorology behind the interaction with the storm that could bring it close to the East Coast, and uh, some of the concerns that we have moving forward here. I'm sure you've all heard the media hype and uh, a lot of the discussion about it, but uh, we're going to try and lay out the details to make it a little easier understood. <clears throat> this is Hurricane Sandy as she is right now. Um, 5 o'clock p.m. advisory from the National Hurricane Center. And you can see the winds at 80 miles an hour sustained as the storm is sitting over Jamaica. And the movement is north at 14 miles an hour. This is pretty well forecast. The storm might be maybe a little stronger than uh, most thought it would be at this time. Uh, but it's going to continue moving north <clears throat> through the Caribbean. Here's the National Hurricane Center's uh, 5 p.m. advisory uh, map and information on the bottom there with the max sustained winds of movement, which we went over already. And you can see the track north and then even the northwest bend as uh, she moves towards the Bahamas. Tropical storm warnings for Florida there with the extent of the storm. Um, and this, you can see this is a pretty broad envelope for the storm to track. Um, with the National Hurricane Center not totally budging towards the solution that takes the storm inland over the mid-Atlantic. And we're going to talk about that, the meteorology behind that. Um, but this is the National Hurricane Center suggested track, which if Sandy were to track down the line of these black dots, um, would bring pretty minimal impacts to our area, but we're not out of the woods and we're going to explain why. Uh, this is a four panel chart of the GFS, the Global Forecast System. That's an American forecast model. And uh, we're looking at the top left panel here, which is 500 millibar heights and vorticity. So this is the middle of the atmosphere where a lot of the interactions go on. Uh, we have two things highlighted. We're going to look at the one on the right first, the yellow circle. That's Hurricane Sandy as the GFS forecast her to be. Sunday morning. So off the coast of the Carolinas, kind of meandering out there actually. Um, and if you look to the left now, there's the trough over the central United States, which is sweeping south and east towards the hurricane. Uh, now this is where the discrepancy exists among models. Will that trough get there in time to phase with Hurricane Sandy? Or even another option that we're seeing on models, will it just you know effectively kick Sandy out to sea, which is what the GFS actually uh, is hinting at. Here is uh, the comparison of what these uh, two major models do. On the right, we have the GFS. On the left, we have the European. So we're looking at heights now. We're not, we don't have the vorticity on these maps. Um, but on the right side, we'll look to the right first. There's GFS. You see that trough over the central U.S. has now moved into the eastern U.S., but Sandy is off to the east. The European model has the two phasing, and what happens uh, in the phasing situation is Sandy comes back to the northwest, and then the European model... I mean, she's sitting right off the New Jersey coast and around 940, <clears throat> 950 millibars, which is really, uh, I mean, we, we can say that we're not, you know, too concerned that this is going to be likely or whatever, but you can't deny the fact that when you're looking at these model solutions, what we're looking at right now, um, that's a very powerful storm sitting off the New Jersey coast. Um, but it's important also to look at the hours. We're looking at 120 hours from now, or <clears throat> Monday, Tuesday, of next week. It's pretty far out and a lot can change. We want to talk, we want to harp on one thing here. We look to the north of the storm and you can see the colors are getting darker red. If you look on the right, the heights are going up, which means, means there's a mid-level ridge to the north of Sandy over Newfoundland. That's a very important feature we highlighted here on the Euro. This ridge <coughs> is extremely anomalous. It's very rare to see this, this type of the year, this, uh, this type of block, this time of the year. Um, and it's a very important feature because as the trough phases and interacts with Sandy off the coast, she could want to drift to the north and east. But this block being there and being so anomalous and being so strong acts almost like a wall so that the hurricane or the hybrid storm, once the phase occurs, is literally forced to turn north and west from the ocean inland, if that phase were to occur as some of the models have it. That's a very important feature, and we talked about how anomalous it is. You can see it here. This is a map of, really, uh, North America, the Northern Hemisphere. And you can see 
the trough in relation to Sandy, extremely anomalous feature there, but equally anomalous to the north and east of it is that North Atlantic Ridge, which extends down into Newfoundland, acts like a blocking feature so that the hurricane cannot escape to the north and east. She can escape to the east, like the GFS suggests, um, but the north and east is not an option until the phase has already occurred, if it does occur. Here's what a lot of the forecast, this is, I'm going to explain this, this is a NCEP ensemble guidance, so this is GFS based, most of it, and um, <clears throat> what we're seeing is a very big trend over the last couple of days to bring this storm north and west. Obviously the phase is occurring and the storm cannot go through the block to the north, and so Sandy is forced to come inland. Um, I mean, this is not a, a very good map if you, you are trying to avoid a major impact storm system in the northeast. Uh, most of these models are bringing this storm at one point or another into the northeast United States, into New England, with a lot of them clustered around our area, coincidentally, in the New York City area. Um, there are a few uh, stragglers here which escape out towards Europe. Uh, you can see uh, the green and the orange uh, colors here. I don't know exactly which member they are. Uh, ensembles are interesting because they're lower resolution versions of the GFS run over and over and over 20 times. And these are the results you get. And what the, we do in meteorology is we use ensembles. Uh, obviously the individual members are important with tropical systems, but a lot of times you use ensembles to get a mean. Say, okay, maybe one, you know, you run the GFS one time, maybe it has an error. You run the GFS 20 times to take the mean of that. Uh, you get better forecasts, uh, uh, an average, less prone to big swings um, when you're just running it twice or four times a day. Uh, so this is the ensembles that you can see as we talked about. A lot of them starting to hint at the storm coming back north and west. Uh, we wanted to talk about the uh, <coughs> sea surface temperatures. Sandy is currently in a very warm area down near Jamaica. Uh, and with, well, with the track north, oh, excuse me there, with the track north, <coughs> we'll continue to encounter uh, decently warm SSTs, and then you can see the Gulf Stream, which is a warm air, warm water here off the Carolina coast. A lot of models have sandy meandering there, and that is going to help um, <clears throat> with her strength. Eventually, when the phase occurs, the system uh, might become uh, more of a hybrid between a tropical system and a nor'easter, um, but that kind of interaction um, is for, you know, for a discussion as we get closer to the phase, if it does happen at all. So here are the facts we know. As we said, we're going to keep this pretty brief. Just wanted to lay out some of the options that are at the on the table. I can already see we made a typo here. Uh, here are the facts. So the forecast remains highly uncertain. Listen, I mean, um, although some of the models are coming to show the storm coming back farther north and west and impacting the area, um, it's too early to say. That, it's a, that this is definitely going to happen. And it's too early to start ringing alarms and go into the Home Depot and buy plywood. Uh, obviously, this is, could be a very high-impact system if it does happen, but in the second bullet point, you've said, potential still exists for model guidance to rapidly, you should say, change there at the end. Things can change so quickly uh, if the models are misinterpreting one piece of the puzzle here. Uh, so we want to keep things pretty low-key for now, but just remember that the potential exists for a significant storm system. What would the impacts be if the storm were to occur? The strongest model solution is like the Euro model. We'd be dealing with very high winds out of the southeast, um, an onshore flow gale of around, <clears throat> I don't know, 50 to 70 miles an hour with gusts probably higher than that along the ocean. Prolific rains, the precipitable water, the amount of moisture in the atmosphere. This forecast to be extremely anomalous with this tropical system um, if it does occur. Uh, we could be looking at you know several inches of rain and widespread throughout the area. Beach erosion with the high winds, the high surf, the full moon is forecast around the time. Uh, the onshore winds are going to create big, big problems near the ocean if this does happen. And obviously power outages with all this going on. If the weaker model solutions do verify with the storm staying to our east and out to sea, we could get nothing if the storm does go out to sea. We could see moderately strong winds with some rain if she tracks close to us but doesn't come inland. Or even if... Sandy curves back inland north of our area, we'd be on the weaker side of the storm system. Um, so this is just an, a, you know, a broad explanation as to what um, some of the things we could be looking at. It's way too early to give a definitive forecast. Um, but listen, I mean, as meteorologists, our job is to get the word out about potential. Um, and when you're dealing with a storm that could go either way, with one side of the envelope meaning high impact and the other one meaning nothing, um, our best outlet is to give you a briefing on everything that's possible.
And so uh, we hope we gave you guys a little bit of a look in as to what we're dealing with here as uh, our team of meteorologists work countless hours during the next week or so uh, to try and keep you guys informed about what's going on. So stay tuned to our Facebook and Twitter and our website uh, for updates. And if you're on Facebook and Twitter, feel free to interact with us. Um, ask us any questions you might have. You can also shoot us an email. Um, and we'll do our best to answer any questions you might have. And we'll also be updating, obviously, as the storm continues to get closer. So thanks for watching, and uh, <clears throat> we'll keep you guys updated. And if you have any questions or concerns, we hope to hear from you soon.